Hello, I'm Greg Peffer and I'm the field agronomist with Pioneer in Southeast Missouri. Today I want to tell you about southern rust in corn. I want to first discuss some of the characteristics of the disease, how to distinguish it from common rust, also how that you might scout for it and ultimately control the disease as well. So first let's talk about some of the characteristics of southern rust. Southern rust is a disease that's very devastating to corn, especially where the conditions favor the progression of it. We're dependent upon uh, a tropical system to bring it up to us because it does not overwinter here in the North Delta. It does overwinter in the South Delta, and so if there is a remnant of a hurricane or some sort of tropical depression or system that brings it to us, we can see southern rust. There's two types of rust in corn in which we see in our fields pretty regular, the first of which is common rust. And as the name suggests, we see it fairly commonly year after year. It has a fairly low infection rate. Um, it's usually not very devastating to corn. Uh, on the other hand, southern rust, we, we don't see it with as much frequency uh, due to we don't always get those southern systems to bring it to us. But it is much more devastating to corn, uh, especially when those conditions are favorable for it. Also, it can progress very rapidly as uh, some of our conditions are favorable throughout the summer for its progression. Here we have a good illustration of the difference between southern rust and common rust. Notice on this bottom leaf we have some rather mature lesions of common rust and notice their distribution on the leaf is pretty scattered. Uh, as they open up, as these lesions open up, we have more of a brick red, kind of a darker red type of color. Uh, here on the top leaf, we have southern rust. Notice the colonization is much more patchy in appearance. The lesions are pinhead in size, and the color is, is very orange in comparison to the common rust lesions. Also notice that as you flip the leaf over, you'll see that the common rust lesions do extend through the leaf. And as you flip the leaf over, while you do see some you know, chlorotic patterns, you don't really see that lesion that really extends all the way through the leaf yet uh, until that southern rust lesion really matures a lot further. So that's some of the differences and how to distinguish the difference between southern rust and common rust in corn. So now I want to tell you how to scout for southern rust. What I do is I go to a field, I look at several different places in the field, and I'm looking for some of those areas where southern rust has deposed in that field and I'm looking for the middle to the upper part of the canopy. And if I find one place in which I find southern rust, a lot of times I'll just flag that field and I'll come back another five days later to see if it's progressed any further. However, if I go through that field and I find a spot where I, where I have southern rust, and then I go another 20 feet and find another spot, another 15, 20, 30 feet, and I find another spot, I know that there's a lot of southern rust hot spots, as I call them, in those fields, and that will trigger, uh, in my mind, an application for that field. So now I want to talk about the steps in which I take to determine the control for southern rust. The first thing that I will do is I will try to determine just how far along the corn is in maturity. So the way that I do that during grain fill is I take the ear and I will break it in half, and what I'm looking for is the milk line and I take the ear tip end and I will inspect the ear tip end to see where the milk line is at. Now, as you can see, this corn is not real far along during grain fill yet. Here we have a milk line that is beginning to start just on this kernel, but most of them do not have much of a milk line yet. And so this one may be 10% milk line at most. And the milk line is that starch layer that is beginning to form and it progresses from the cap of the kernel all the way towards the tip. And so as we see the milk line move closer to the tip, then it would be a higher percentage of milk line. And so this would be a low percentage milk line, but if it gets down here close to the husk, then that would be closer to a 75% milk line stage. And so why is that important for determining how to control or treat southern rust? Well, we found that in the past, that we've got experience where it is best to control southern rust all the way to 75% milk line. And the reason is because there are times whenever the disease progresses so rapidly that if we do not treat all the way to 75% milk line or keep the disease at control, 
75% milk line, then if that plant shuts down at that point, it will rob nutrients from the stalk and the roots in order to send it to the grain in order to finish it out. And that leaves the stalk and the plant susceptible to a secondary stalk or root rot. And growers many times have you know, take, had to take a corn reel in order to pick up corn and there's a lot of yield loss associated with the standability late season. And so the next question that I usually get after we determine what the milk line is or how far along the corn is, what do I need to do? Or what do I need to treat with? My recommendation is that we need to treat with a good dual mode of action fungicide. One in which will have both curative and preventative properties because we, we want to try to kill what southern rust is there, but also provide that preventative activity in order for new rust not to recolonize the leaf. And so it's important to utilize that dual mode of action fungicide. Now, our strategy can change as we get closer and closer to that 75% milk line range. Let's say, for example, that we've treated at that 10% milk line that I showed you earlier with a dual mode of action fungicide, and as it begins to wear out closer to that 60, 70% milk line range, we might be able to go out there with just a good curative fungicide to finish us out. And so the strategy can change depending on how far along the corn is. So it's important to ask questions, you know, talk to your consultants, talk to your pioneer rep, talk to me, pioneer agronomist, uh, or also your territory manager for more information. I'm Greg Peffer, field agronomist with Pioneer. Thanks for watching. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.